Hey everybody, Rock and Robbie here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the Martian Manhunter. Okay, so the Martian Manhunter was created in 1955 by Joseph Samoxon and Joe Serta. He first appeared in Detective Comics 225. Um, the character that everybody knows as the Martian Manhunter, if you're familiar with the Justice League cartoons or comic books and so on, um, you're, you're, you're more familiar with the character as he is today. When he was first created back in the Silver Age, he was a completely different character. He was almost an exact copy of Superman in terms of attitude and stories and powers, of course. Over time, they invented so many powers for the Martian Manhunter. Um, in that time in comic books, they would just create a power for a superhero to get out of a story. And John, John Jones, the Martian Manhunter, he actually retains most of these powers that came from the, the Silver Age. And a lot of characters don't really have, a lot of, like Superman, for instance, has been reduced in power many different times throughout history to make him more appealing. Martian Manhunter has just kept adding to the collective registry he has of superpowers. It's insane how many he has. The current day take on Martian Manhunter, where he is the final... A member of the Martian race. Uh, that comes from the 1988 Martian Manhunter miniseries by J.M. DeMattis, which is an excellent book I'll get into in just a second. Um, Dr. Erdell was a physicist or uh, some kind of scientist, right? And he had a beam that he was putting out into the universe, and it came across Mars. Turns out Mars thousands of years ago. And it pulled John Jones. His true Martian name is Malachandra, as we later find out. But John Jones, it pulls him to Earth. The dude dies from shock. Turns out he's back later, but whatever. He dies from shock, so John can't get back. And so now he's stuck on Earth. And he becomes, uh, he takes on a human identity, John Jones, a, a detective. And he lives out a civilian life helping others. And then, of course, becoming the Martian Manhunter. He was the, a founding member of the Justice League. Of America. Um, before we get into those powers, he's got one major weakness, and that weakness is fire. And it turns out that the weakness to fire is purely psychological. Um, it's there's something that's just com fire is completely debilitating to his mind, and he can't maintain his form. For instance, he's a shapeshifter. So let's get into those powers. Uh, he's got superhuman strength. He's got durability, flight, uh, regeneration, shape-shifting, like I told you, intangibility, invisibility, telepathy, telekinesis, and he even has optic blasts, okay? So he's got a plethora of powers. So he's an incredibly powerful character, and I would argue the most important character in the Justice League. He's always kind of represented the heart of the Justice League. He has been, until recently... In almost every incarnation of the Justice League ever, there's always Martian Manhunter. Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, those characters are not often in the JLA throughout its entire history. Martian Manhunter is pretty much always there. That's where he resides. If you wanted to keep up with Martian Manhunter, that's where you had to go. So, why is he so important? Well, it's because he's the heart. That means he's the balance of the Justice League. If you look at the members of the Justice League, they're highly polarized individuals. And of course, that's something we can learn from. I would argue that Martian Manhunter is not. Martian Manhunter is completely centered and balanced. Now, in the Silver Age, like I said, he, he was different. Like the Mars he came from, he wasn't the last surviving member of the Martian race. The Mars he came from was like Warlord of Mars, you know, the John Carter stuff. It was like this fantastic, crazy, you know, sci-fi epic adventure. Um, that changed in the 1988 miniseries I recently was reading that for the first time, actually. And that is where the idea that he's the last surviving member of the race is introduced. Uh, the Martian god Haraminer, or something like that, um, he shows up, basically, and forces John to confront this past that has been buried within him because he couldn't cope, he couldn't deal with it otherwise. So he had to go through a trial by fire, if you will. It's interesting, Haraminer, in the beginning, calls himself the Lord of Light and Life. And then towards the end, they talk about him being the god of fire and death. So, those are polar opposites, so it's all the same thing. Let's go to center. That's what Martian Manhunter represents. And he had to go... He was this goofy Superman ripoff in the Silver Age, and then he really comes into his own. And J.M. DeMattis did an excellent job writing that book. Um, it's fantastic. I highly recommend you get it. Um, so, 
he had to go through that trial by fire and it was incredibly destructive just like we inside of ourselves have things from our past or things about who we actually are or habits we have and we hide them within and we deny them we deny their existence and in order to bring ourselves into balance just like Martian Manhunter we have to go through that fire we have to go through that pain that's the book where that happened that is the turning point in the Martian Manhunter he is also always represented as being the meditative member of the Justice League so they go out of their way to talk about him meditating think about it this way on the tree of life if you're familiar you have the sphere of Gaborah right and that represents the Mars energy like destruction okay and then over here you have Kesed which represents the Jovian aspect, the Jupiter stuff, uh, you know, benevolence and mercy, right? So you can imagine Batman is more leaning towards that destructive energy. Superman is more towards mercy. But they're both polarized, at, if you see. And only in the center do you find Martian Manhunter, who has aspects of both equally balanced. He can be fierce and destructive, and he can be very merciful and benevolent. So... Those colors, for instance, represented by those planets are even red and blue, and Martian Manhunter actually wears red and blue. Coincidence? Absolutely. Does it mean something? Absolutely. So, even in the 80s Justice League, you know, the comedic take on the, the book with uh, Blue Beetle and Booster Gold and Guy Gardner and whatnot, he was the straight man. Even in comedy, he is the straight man. He's the balanced one that you can play jokes off of, and it works really well. He also loves... DC's version of Oreo cookies, which are like Chocos or Chocos or something like that. Um, that's interesting, too. So, um, How can we use the influence of, of Martian Manhunter into our lives? Well, I would say balance, right? So how can we balance ourselves? Well, the first steps towards balancing yourself is understanding that you're polarized, okay? So everything is the same thing. We are all the same thing, but we all have different opinions and points of views. We're all on a different spot on the line, if you will. We need to center ourselves. Think of, think of politics or college football here in Alabama. Um, people are so like polarized, they just, it doesn't matter what happens, you know how they're going to react. So we need to balance ourselves because that's how you're truly going to get a connection. So understand that your mind has two sides, conscious, subconscious. Meditation is going to balance that. It will also help the balance between your body and your mind. Too many people live in their heads. Meditation helps you get out of your head, into your body, mind, okay? So it increases awareness, mindfulness, relaxation, but most importantly, balance. So what I would recommend is the point meditation is a good place to start. You just focus on a point on the wall and just keep it. You just seriously like... And don't think of anything. And don't worry about it. If a thought comes in, just don't engage the thought. Just let it flow through, right? You're going to realize how much jumble is up there once you start meditating. You want to work your way up, do it in like five minute increments if you want. But you, I would recommend 20 minutes a day. And it seems like it's a pain, but the benefits you'll see in like two to three weeks. So also while you're doing it, the fourfold breath. You breathe in four, you hold four. You let out for four, you hold four. Very simple. Uh, the count doesn't matter, just the pattern. Um, breathing is the one aspect of your body that your subconscious and your conscious mind can control. So I don't know if that helps that or whatever, but just focus and just be acquainted with yourself. That will start bringing some balance into your life. More advanced technique that solely goes right after balance is the middle pillar meditation. I encourage you to look that up as well. If you want some reading material, and I always think you should read more, the John Ostrander Martian Manhunter run from the late 90s. And what I've been talking about is the J.M. DeMattis Martian Manhunter. Four issues, 1988. This book is superb, absolutely. Also, there's a book by Stephanie Clement, Meditation for Beginners. It's very simple, gives you a lot of techniques. Meditation is very important. It's why people have been doing it for thousands of years, why people continue to do it today. There's many different forms of it, but the benefits are all the same. So, Martian Manhunter, Balance, Meditation. There you go. Until next time, thanks for watching.